Hello everyone, my name is Andrea Palacios and I'll be doing the honors presentation for this class. Today, taking a look back to my normal life two months ago, I see I was going to school, I was socializing over the weekends and thinking about the future once in a while. Perhaps I was so excited about spring break and how close summertime was coming, but now that the coronavirus is here, I realized I had a week where I fell down. My energy levels were on the floor. Um, I had troubles sleeping and feelings of depression arose. When I reflect back to an unusual week for me, I realized how difficult life can be for someone who suffers from mood disorders. Therefore, I decided to make my honors presentation about major depressive disorder and how this illness does not discriminate sex, age, socioeconomic status, anything. You and me and the person next to you can have it. All of us can suffer from it. What is depression? According to American Psychological Association, everyone can experience depression which is an extreme feeling of sadness that lasts for days. Depression interferes with daily activities. It inhibits people from uh, performing or engaging in any kind of daily activities or interactions. Um, it is important, I think this is so important, that people know that suffering depression does not mean the person is weak. It is a complex but serious illness involving body, mood, thoughts, and behavior. What are the causes of this illness? The specific cause, guess what guys? It's unknown. Especially because each case is unique. Your brain is unique, my brain is unique, everybody's brain is just unique. However, there is a combination of factors that can trigger this condition. We have genetic factors, biological factors, and environmental factors. The genetic factors are when a person who has a first degree relative who suffers from um, major depression has an increase in risk for this condition between 1.5% up to 3% over the normal. The biological factors is when a person has a lower levels of neurotransmitters, especially serotonin, which is what makes us feel happy. Therefore, when the body is unable to produce as much serotonin, people show symptoms of depression. Finally, environmental factors. Major life changes, trauma. Guys, stress is also considered a trigger that can cause an episode of depression. What are the symptoms of this illness? You can see that people start having changes in sleep patterns, appetite changes, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, anger, feelings of guilt, uh, prolonged sadness, chronic pains such as headaches, loss of interest in activities, withdrawal from family and friends, and sadly, thoughts of death or suicide. What are the treatments for this illness? Depression is highly curable, and if it is diagnosed and treated properly, people can have a better quality of life. The first treatment that people seek here in the United States, unfortunately, is medication. Antidepressants might be prescribed to change and modify brain chemistry. Psychotherapy is the second one, is the talk therapy that is sometimes used alone uh, for mild, moderate to severe depression. And as it was mentioned by Professor Anis, the combination of both methods is good However, the best way to treat this illness is if the person also has a healthy lifestyle, exercising every day, 
having healthy eating habits, no smoking, no drinking, not consuming drugs. Remember that everything we eat and drink has an impact in our body, in our mind, affecting the way we think and feel about the world around us. As I mentioned earlier, depression does not discriminate sex, age, socioeconomic status. Everyone can suffer from this illness. And for this honors project, what we wanted to do with Professor Anis is to show you guys that everyone can suffer from this illness. So I have an example of a famous person that struggles with this. The well-known Katy Perry. She is a proof that this mental illness can affect rich people, poor men, women, children, American, Latinos, everybody can suffer from this. My name is Dr. Siri Satnam Singh, and I'm a licensed therapist. This week, I'm sitting down with a young woman who came from a religious upbringing to become one of the most famous singers in the world. This is Katy Perry. This is a video that is like a therapy session between Katherine Hudson and a therapist. And in this um, video, she talks about how she grew up in a very conservative family. Her parents were pastors and therefore they had very strict rules, which didn't allow her to be a normal child. She also reports feeling depressed and trapped between what Catherine has to feel in order to be Katy Perry and just keep the show going. An important sign of her depression is that she reports that even though she is rich, successful, and has lots of love from her fans and family, she still feels feeling empty. She also turned into substance use, in her case, alcohol, to just numb her feelings. Finally, in this video, one of the uh, parts that I really like is how she talks and come out and talk without shame that she had suicidal thoughts. She even put this these feelings into words and she has a song called by the grace of god if you have the chance to listen to this song it is beautiful these lyrics just shows all her feelings and the guilt the sadness the shame the desire of give up on life but how she didn't do it because she knew god had better plans for her it's a beautiful song i strongly recommend you guys if you can listen to it uh, finally in this interview she reports how family therapy has helped her work through her childhood experiences which also has helped her improve and heal the relationship with her family she also attends to therapy five years ago, and it has helped her to see life in a different way. Finally, she mentioned how meditation and yoga has helped her mind not to build um, negative feelings and thoughts that could end up in a depression episode. I am also going to leave the link to the video that I've been talking about. Uh, below. I really would like to invite you all to watch the whole video. It's amazing to see someone that you might think nothing happened to her 
that she is just perfect, that she has the perfect life, but she struggles with this mental illness. If you don't have enough time to watch the whole video, I am also leaving some times uh, in the video that I believe they're interesting and powerful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. Why is addressing depression so important? According to the article, Managing Workplace Depression, Major depression currently affects 19 million Americans each year and nearly 70% of adults with depression are younger than 45 and more than 70% of those are actively employed. Since there is a stigma around this illness, some people choose not to share this with their coworkers, with their families, with people that are around them. For instance, companies. Some companies have seen how <clears throat> more and more of their employees still that is still going to work and under function due to their depression. Their performance decline and they show lack of focus, inability to make decisions, apathy, fatigue, and low self-confidence. These negative behaviors and even the absenteeism of their employees have made companies be more aware of this illness and the impact requiring them to come up with strategies to help their employees with wellness programs, safe environments, training and awareness to everyone, which is important because again, having depression is not you is not a meaning of being is not the same as as being weak it's just something you can control that's why if you or someone you know is battling with this with symptoms of depression don't hesitate please seek help and reach out for someone that can help you if you don't feel comfortable telling someone you can call to the helpline 1-800-662-HELP Please, it is okay. Just seek for help.